Welcome back, everybody. Here we are again with the some low grade gamers. Welcome back to our episode 12, I believe it is. We literally just discussed it and I've already forgotten what number it is. So, it's uh, episode 12. It's 12? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yep. Somebody somebody needs to take over my role. On stage. <laughs> Tom, Tom's not the greatest at it. <laughs> Anyways, as usual, some low grade gamers consists of myself and the other half of some kind of gaming. That's S U M kind of gaming for those that are confused. Laura, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Thank you very much for asking. And of course, the beautiful Dan over here, the low grade gamer. How are you doing, man? Not bad. How are you both doing today? We are our, like together. Mm, good. I'm glad you asked because it's actually Valentine's Day upon it recording is Valentine's this. Valentine's Day. Yay, we did nothing. Well, no, we streamed and then we podcast and then we'll write a script. So very romantic. Very romantic. Let's yeah. get some Indian food later. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. That's what we'll we're going to do. We'll put a candle on in the yeah. middle and oh. eat some Indian food while we write a script. That sounds nice, actually. I can think of worse things. <laughs> Dan, how have you been? That's a loaded question. <laughs> mm, that I feel like that silence says it all. It does, doesn't it? For those eagle-eyed viewers or listeners, eagle-eared listeners, I should say, uh, we did miss a week last week. Uh, Dan was in a Struggle Town. Let's just call it Struggle Town. <laughs> yeah, he was in Struggle Town. But you're feeling better now, Dan? I'm all good now. I, I, yeah. I am able to be vertical and horizontal now. Lovely. Just in time for Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. Anyways, let's uh, move on from the, all of our love lives and dance posture and town. verticalness. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> let's go on to some... Uh, Video game news. That is what here it is. That is what we're here to discuss. After all, mm-hmm. now the most obvious thing that happened this week is that there was a Nintendo Direct. It I, was a pretty good one. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of the Nintendo Direct style of of news. Well, how do yeah. you feel about those these Direct Dan? Do you, are you a fan of them, or you just prefer individual game trailers? What's your take? Uh, I think overall. I, I like the idea of sort of grouping everything and, you know, throwing mm-hmm. it out in, in one video. What I sort of disliked, I guess, was I don't remember hearing anything of Breath of the Wild, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I think that that's really realistically, I would say a lot of viewers and listeners, whatever, would have been tuning in to hear any potential Breath of the Wild news. Now, yeah. I just want to interject quickly and say that Nintendo did release a statement saying these, well, it was in everywhere, it was in the description of the YouTube video, these games, they were going to talk about games that were releasing in the first half of 2022. If you realistically thought the Breath of the Wilds 2 was no. releasing in the first half of this year, then I'm sorry, but that's on you. Like I just always want some news. I'm always yeah. hanging out for some news. I know we all wanted it, but people knew. I just want some. Just throw yeah, me like, a look, I, I understand where, where you guys are coming from. Throw me Laura, a bone. Laura yeah. was upset as well, but it was never going to happen. It was never yeah. going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Throw me a bone. Dan will take a yeah. carrot. Just, I'm happy with just neither. That's fine. Actually, if you're going to throw me something, make it a donut. Breath of the Wild 2 news will be released at E3. Zelda Breath of the Wild is an E3 thing. Yeah, it's one of those big E3 ones. Yeah, when is that? 100%. Uh, June or July, E3 is, I believe. Uh, all is digital again this year. Oh, they won't because it's all digital. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But- yeah we, we did do a, um, Dan's forgotten already, we did a whole whole podcast on that. No, <laughs> I'll be that digitally. I wonder if anybody's actually going to do anything there. You mean like oh, PlayStation and Nintendo? I see. PlayStation and Nintendo didn't go. Yeah, they will oh, well, make a presence. Anyway. I think I think Nintendo will make a presence uh, again with the with the Breath of the Wild two news. I think that's um that that's generally where that type of stuff happens, and then they will announce it for 
probably a December release, first week of December, uh, maybe last week in November if Pokemon doesn't do anything else this year. So that's that's my current thinking anyway. I'm going to have to quit my job when Breath of the Wilds 2 comes out so that I can just yeah. move on to my next venture, which will be uh, Breath of the Wilds 2. You're playing that game all day, every day? Yeah. I honestly agree. <laughs> Sorry, Dan, we're not, uh, this is fair warning. We're not going to be able to record the podcast this week because we'll be playing Breath of the Wild. Maybe I can keep doing videos and stuff, but... We're going to be Sorry, recording customers. the podcast, both of, both of us on our Play Switch. Play Breath of the Wild 2 oh. and do the podcast. Play by play, commentary. <laughs> Simultaneously. <laughs> when, Breath, when I first played Breath of the Wilds, I would literally wake up in the morning, play Breath of the Wilds, go to work, come back, play Breath of the Wilds until I went to sleep. Like, that was my life for, like, Months. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, I brought it, it I brought the TV from the room into the lounge of our flat and had it sitting on the coffee table so I could still hang out with my flatmates while I was consistently playing Breath of the Wilds. It was awesome. Just who wanted to play TV mode. As I well. wanted to play TV mode and I still wanted to hang out with everyone. But then everybody kept tripping over my cords, so I had to go back to handheld, put the TV back. It was sad times. They were like, why do you have this here? I was like, why can't you just step over the course? <laughs> <laughs> it was funny times, wasn't it? Anyways, I guess we should uh, get into what actually went on in the direct. So we're going to go through most of the announcements. Uh, we are going to skip over a few, uh, like smaller ones, uh, stuff we already know about. We're not going to include stuff like Kirby, Splatoon, Triangle Strategy, just because we already know about them. We did get a couple of updates, but we, we did already know, I mean, release dates, release dates for a lot of those anyway. So we're going to kick things off with, well, actually, before we kick things off, I just want to say that this Direct, we got a lot of sequels to games that came out in the first year of the Switch's life cycle. And the first game is actually one of those. So we're getting a new Fire Emblem Warriors game. Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. I'm pretty tempted to get it, actually. I really liked Hyrule Warriors. Mm -hmm. I really like the fact that they're adding in canon story elements and it's not just like, you know, the first Hyrule Warriors, it's just like, bah, 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 bah. like this is happening over here, but it's not really like, oh, that was um, battle sounds, by the way. Bah, bah, bah. In yep. case anyone was confused. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was no additions to it. It was just like the gameplay of fighting and stuff, which yep. is sick. Don't get me wrong. But I love how in Hyrule Warriors, there was new story elements and things like that. Yeah, there was a new story. Mm -hmm. that? Yeah, it was a big story, actually. We new got characters. like four or five hours worth of cutscenes. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was and a they're going to do the same with Hyrule Warriors. So that's awesome. You mean Fire Emblem? I mean, sorry. Yeah, Fire Emblem Warriors. That's yep. why I want to get it. Yes, I agree. Yeah, for um, Laura and I are actually going to cosplay as the lead character of the latest Fire Emblem game, Fire Emblem Three Houses. We're going to go to the next convention we go to. We're going to do a, cos a couple's cosplay, the main character, the male version and the female version. So we, we are big Fire Emblem fans, especially Three Houses. That game is like, it's that is a must own on the Switch. Have you played it, Dan? I have played uh, bits and pieces. I haven't gotten to the end only because things just keep popping up. Yes, mm -hmm. there is so many games to play and so little time to play them. It's a pretty long one too. It is, yeah. Well, it's a, yeah, it's an RPG. So. I like how there's so many endings. Yes, I agree. Realistically, if you want to play that game in total, you've got to play it like four times. Mm. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, so lots of content for those who, you know, if you're, struggling for money or something along those lines that's definitely good value for money right there like hundreds of hours easily. i'd play it again yeah i would too if i had yeah. the time i would play it again what house did you go for dan i honestly don't remember it was that was it 2019 it released it was a long time yeah it's like three years 19 or maybe COVID happened <laughs> yeah it's I like, was the yellow house. It's like before COVID and after COVID, isn't it? Yeah. You were red? <laughs> I was you red. Were... Yeah. I went with Edelgard. Yeah. She was cool. I would have probably uh, gone red. That would be my assumption. Yeah. Red goes faster. Yeah. 
<laughs> I was yellow. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah, so I, I feel like, yeah, this new Fire Emblem game is definitely going that route of actually being its own standalone story, which is far nice. Like, look, the Warriors games are cool, right? I'm, I'm a fan. I like them. Dynasty Warriors is fun. Um, you know, Pirate Warriors, fun. But they're all just <sighs> repetitive. Mm-hmm. They're all the same. Yeah. There's just a different skin. You know, that's, and that's fine. Thing. That's fine. I mean, they're, again, they're, they're fun. I'm way more into them now. Yes, exactly. Now there's actually story and there's like, yeah, there, there's just something extra there now. And I honestly, yeah, this is less of a sequel to the other Fire Emblem Warriors game we had on the Switch and more of a sequel to Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I think. And that's cool. I like that the Warriors franchise is doing that. Mm-hmm. And I like that Nintendo is trusting Koei Tecmo with some of their IPs. I it's wonder really- what the next one's going to be. I don't think they're going to stop there. No, like dra- the next Dragon IP? Quest Warriors. Ooh. That would be cool. Yeah, maybe. Like- Animal Crossing Warriors. Ooh. Oh, God, imagine that. Isabel fighting like hordes mm. of, I don't even know, fish. Yes. <laughs> What wasps? Yeah, yeah, wasps. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it. Uh, moving on from Fire Emblem, we then had uh, No Man's Sky. Uh, we don't know anything about this game. I, it looks cool, though. I really loved uh, the little guy riding on the dragonfly. I specifically oh. put that in the video. Yes. Yeah. For those YouTube of you that video. don't know, Laura and I have done a YouTube video on uh, youtube.com forward slash some kind of gaming with an S-U-M. Uh, if you want to go check that out, it is over there. We go into a bit more detail on some of our personal opinions on that. And you can see the guy riding a dragonfly. He's fly. like, he actually goes like this on it. It's so cute. It pops up and down. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's adorable. He's disproportionate. <laughs> and that's about the end of our thoughts on No Man's Sky. But Dan's excited for it. Yeah, I'm excited well, for I'm No Man's Sky. I thought... I thought they uh, they did a good job of showing No Man's Sky, especially I think Nintendo, what they've done relatively well with the directs, there was, there was some lacking aspects, but they've really kept like 40 minutes fairly engaging. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, it was just gameplay after gameplay after trailer. Uh, it's awesome. And I think we had gameplay for almost every game as well, which is important. I like that. Yeah, yeah, not just cinematic trailers. They're cool, but they're not like you get, yeah. you don't get an res- idea. If I'm researching a game that I want and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll look up something about it, I never watch the cinematic trailers no. because it doesn't actually tell you anything no, about the game either. usually. So, no, I, I was excited for No Man's Sky, the multiplayer, which is meant to be cross platform, which is pretty cool. And I don't know, I doubt it. But there's a whole VR uh, aspect to No Man's Sky. So I don't know if Nintendo are going to try and implement that with their Labo stuff was something that popped into my head. I don't think so, only because the VR Labo doesn't work on the OLED because the screen size is different. Yeah. Ah. Of course, but maybe they'll release some other sort of VR because, you know, Among Us is getting VR, so I'd like to play that on the Switch. In VR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I don't don't know where they're going to go. I also don't know where we're going to go with VR in total. Mm. No, no, I agree. Yeah, we're still waiting for um, the Sony PlayStation VR number two. That's the next thing in VR. Anyways, let's not get a... (laughs) <laughs> that's a topic for another day, the old uh, VR. Because No Man's Sky is a port, isn't it? Mm. Do you know how old the actual game is? Like, are we classic Nintendo fans getting it like two years after the fact? I think so. Year, it's what? on, um, I mean, not that it says much, but it is on the PS4. Okay, so, yeah. So it's at least. It has made its way to Steam, which usually is later than yep. the console stuff. So uh, it is on everything, though. So it's on Xbox One, Series X, um, Steam, PS5, PS4. So the fact that it is coming to Nintendo, I do like the fact that more stuff is coming to Nintendo. So I think No Man's Sky is uh, pretty, 
I think there's about 30 hours of story. Okay. Oh, so, it's decent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly decent. So I think overall, I think No Man's Sky is a good contribution to Nintendo. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm always, uh, like, again, I've never heard of it and I would probably have never heard of it if it didn't come to this direct. So. Is it like an RPG or is it like a life sim? Looked like a life sim. Mm. Yeah, it's like, I'm trying to think of a game. Um, it's quite a unique title. A game that's sort of, for some reason, Mass Effect popped into my head, which. Okay. Isn't isn't a hundred percent right? Because they're just RPGs, the Mass Effect, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's go with an RPG. Okay, nice. All right, yeah, it sounds Got good. It. RPG with its own unique elements. Yeah, mm. it looks go. very beautiful. The um, mm-hmm. the graphics and the colors. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, at least the visuals look nice, yeah. which is always a, a good thing for the Switch because we all know it is quite underpowered at this stage. All right, moving on, we got our first big one. Um, not offensive, either of the two announcements we've already talked about were your personal favourite. I'm sure they're definitely someone's personal favourite out there. But the first proper big one, I think we can all agree, Super Mario Strikers. Now, I know specifically Dan is looking quite forward to this one. Dan, you want to kick us off here? I, lo- I thought it was interesting. It was it's an interesting premise. I like the fact that yeah, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but you get souped up and then all of a sudden you score two goals instead of a single goal. And all those other aspects that they're bringing to it, plus uh, I believe I saw that you could strap the leg strap to your leg eventually. So. Uh- can, I think you're confusing that with another uh, announcement. We Sports and that. Yeah. Now I'm pretty sure this this is coming to Strikers. Are you sure? Yeah, it's not released yet. I'm I'm 99 sure, but I will go. Okay. It. Dance predictions. Tune in once Mario Strikers has been released, and then, or maybe it'll be like an add-on. Well, I, I thought I saw it as a uh, coming in later down the track. Yes. Yeah. And that would be awesome. That's, or I uh, could be, or I could be important. mixing it up with the soccer that's coming. Yeah. We, now that now that you've said that, maybe I am. But either yeah, way, I think- <laughs> regardless, I'm getting too old. I. <laughs> I'm excited for Mario Strikers. I thought it looked cool and a little bit of fun. Yeah. Did you ever play either of the other games? I like, played. I, I know of Maybe they more. I played. I'm trying to think of what it was called. They're just Mario Strikers something, something. There's one on the Wii, one on the GameCube. Yeah, uh, I the, think the first one was on the GameCube. The GameCube oh. one. Yeah, but I'm sure I played something similar, like way back. Mm, okay, I haven't played any of the Mario Strikers games before. No, neither have I. Uh, uh, look, I know, I know, football or soccer is the most played game in the world, and so many people love it. I mean, like, there's crowds in the UK have to like leave the stadium at separate times for God's sake. So there's no like deaths. It's insane. Yeah. They just, what, fight, like they just fight each other. Oh yeah. 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 That's um, like, you know, they soft- just fight each other. Oh yeah. Cause the opposing teams. Yeah. You know, like Green Street Hooligans. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah the yeah, opposing that. teams. At first I was like, what, why would they do such a thing? But then I remembered humans. Yeah. Yeah. Humans. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, yeah, uh, they. How could I have They're so literal much gangs, fun? you know. Anyway, the the point is, people are ridiculously passionate about it. I don't like it. Don't 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 crucify me. I'm just not. I'm not a sports fan to begin with. I, I, it's not really my thing. I, I like video games. They're fun. <laughs> <laughs> Esports are cool. Uh, but yeah, sports in general, they're just. I've I, I've never been that great at them. 
Um, I, and eye coordination is not the greatest thing in the world. Mine's shocking. Laura's is <laughs> even worse, yes. So, yeah, I don't – I mean, sports games, had a lot of fun with Mario Golf. Uh, yeah, that's a really fun game. You know, but, you know, you really have to offer me something. And soccer's just – it's just – it's not, not doing it, it for, for me. You. That's that's all I have to say. The main good thing about Mario Golf is that you get to go like this. For those of them that oh, are listening. I'm doing running motions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I better add like a sound effect. There you go. Yeah, nice. <laughs> it wasn't as good as a bad effect, sound no. effect in my opinion, but. <laughs> now, look, I'm, yeah, I, I, am, I am looking forward to Mario Strikers. What I. What I'm con- not concerned with, but what I feel the newer games at the moment are lacking is games that are easy to play with, say, a four-year-old, five-year-old, all that sort of thing. So mm-hmm. for me, I feel this is a game where she could really wrap her head around. That's my daughter. True, yeah. Daughter. So that's mm. that's more where, like, I, I do, like, Soccer or, or football, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Some are passionate about certain name. I don't care. It's a game. Relax. Yeah. Uh, I do enjoy playing it. I used to play it a lot. We used to, we, we set up a club and all those other bits and pieces. And we. we and is Italian, those of you that don't know. So that yeah. probably says a lot. I'm doing <laughs> Hold on, Laurie, you need to do sound effects. Oh. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I was hearing it in my head before you even said it. <laughs> sure. The no, Italians no, no, love I, soccer. That's yeah, I, I'm a fan. I, like I said, I used to play. We even won, like just as a you know friendly thing. But we, we even won the the grand final for our thing and got medals and all that sort of stuff. And my oh. my daughter likes wearing the medal around, so I feel good. So oh. I'm. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just looking for more games that I can play with her. That's that's my big thing. Sure. Uh, probably bringing it up a little bit early, but Mario Kart for us has run its course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The current course. Uh, yeah. You know, if she's a kid. She gets bored. That's the... Yeah, 100%. Yeah, definitely. You're always looking out for titles to play with her. Yeah. I will just let you know that uh, Mario Strikers is notoriously violent for a Mario game. Yeah, that's okay. Should like, you can, like, push people into electric fences and, like, shock them and stuff. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah so, be. I like that. Violence is fun. Funner than soccer. <laughs> we'll uh, just make sure we, we, don't, we don't do those bits. Now, our soccer games used to get quite violent, violent. too. I remember one guy went straight through the wall because it was indoor oh, soccer. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, soccer, for sure. So, yeah, it went, went straight through the wall. That was intense. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. That's awesome. For a, a non-contact game, soccer gets oh. yeah, quite full on at times. I don't understand this non-contact thing because I, I swear our games were just full on contact. We versed an Irish team once. I've gone on a tangent. We versed an Irish team once <laughs> and they were so violent and aggressive. This is this is actually the game where the guy went through the thing. So he Bit came yeah. barreling down to try and tackle one of my mates. My mate is very, um, he's got his, like, quite quick on his feet. So he, yep. he just stopped like that. I need a sound effect. He just stopped. <laughs> Thank you. And this guy just sort of went straight past him, straight through the wall. And just like ended up on the floor, sprawled oh, on the floor, and my mate That's scored a goal because obviously everybody was watching the guy on the floor, <laughs> and my mate went, "I'm getting a goal." Yeah, how is that? it like? Um, do you have to cut your fingernails before you play? Huh? Like, is like that netball? just girls' sports? Like netball? Girls' sports get so like. I played netball. Violent play and mixed, catty. We used to play mixed netball for the uh, for the company I, I used to work for. So yeah, you've yeah. got to cut your nails before you play netball. That or they gave you white gloves. Mm. Oh. Because like yeah. girls scratch the shit out of each other. Okay. Wow. 
like they you got to like literally go like this they check your nails and they've got oh, clippers yeah. i think i remember that actually you have to cut your fingernails yeah, interesting to, yeah that's exactly right the ref used to come up and check your nails and yeah. um maybe i should get more into sports then this is at least girl make sports. it sound way more fun girl sports is where the violence is at man oh, we, we, used to, we used to have a lot of fun with um because we played mixed soccer as well so mixed soccer mixed netball and then and then guys soccer so I, I did yep. all of those sports at the same same time. So yeah, like I said, I was I I was and and I'm quite into soccer. I do like World Cup stuff and and all of that sort of thing. Yep. So for me, I, I'd like them to continue the Mario sports stuff. So mm-hmm. I think it'd be yeah. cool to hit, see a netball game and you know. Yeah, I agree. Even baseball, but I think it all needs to be one game. Yeah, so ah, uh, we sports, but we Mario. Oh like, wait, sorry, Switch Mario sports. Sonic, I just I, went I, back I, in time. See, I, I don't Mario and Sonic Olympics. Yeah, Mario and yeah. Sonic are the Olympic games. Yeah, so yeah. I, I played that recently, which was okay. But I think if they really focused on the Mario IP and and did it that yeah. way, they could do a better job. Yeah, Mario and Sonic, I feel like that's a bunch of, like, mini games almost. I never yeah. touched um, that. Yeah. Even at the arcade, there is it's one. It's fun at the, at the arcade. arcade. I, it's, it's a bit weird. It doesn't work very well. Uh, but I think I agree with you with the sports thing. I, I would be nice if there were one, but they're never going to do it because they just make money, man. They yeah. just roll. If they uh, sell them individually, they make both yeah, money. Exactly. Like they 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 are able to sell them individually. So I think like they will continue pack. making different sports games though. I want I think a Mario baseball would work really well. Mm-hmm. I like that mm-hmm. idea. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think I think that would be fantastic. I reckon a Mario basketball or netball would be Yeah, that's good true. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because we've got what do we got now? Tennis, golf, and now soccer or football. Mm. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, on the switch at least. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, no, I'm happy. I think I just have one more uh, addition to this Mario Strikers thing. My favourite part about this is that you're able to create clubs. That is cool. I thought that was so cool. I was. That is very cool. They're 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 clearly really like they're going for an online thing here mm-hmm. uh we didn't i don't i don't remember hearing about a campaign necessarily uh, i'm sure there will be one yeah there'll be something but like i feel anyway. like the focus is definitely the online component yes yeah. and problem though yeah what the Nintendo's the online app. is absolute crap it is well it is abysmal they the way they have done it compared to Sony and Xbox, and I know I've said this before, but they're online. Like features, though? Yeah, it just has, like, for example, the Nintendo, if you take a screenshot or you take video yeah. on your Nintendo Switch, yeah, it is a pain in the ass to get it from your, from your Switch to your phone. And when I say pain in the ass, it's you've got to sit there, you've got to scan a QR code, you've got to wait, yeah. join, and then scan the QR code again, and then it will send to your phone. Okay. Now, we just window capture on our PC. So I know that's I send not- it to, because you can share it to Facebook yeah, from the Switch. And then, yeah. And then I go on to Facebook and then I get it from there and put it on my phone. And then I usually delete it from Facebook. <laughs> See, which is, <laughs> which is that's same easier. compared to, say, Xbox. It whereas if I do a screenshot or a, or a video capture on Xbox, it goes to the cloud where I can then access it on my phone. So all I'm saying is they need to, they really need to make things a bit more cohesive before they start pushing because they, they pushed online. They got the, they got three yeah. games they're bringing out. That's all streaming. I think it was three. Yeah. They really need to focus on the online aspect because it is crap. It is subpar. If you want to chat. send a video from your yes. Switch to your phone, you can only do it one video at a time. At least with images, you can do 10. So I, I agree with you guys that the features aren't there uh, and that it is lacking, but you can play soccer online with your friends as Mario and Bowser. So, like, who cares? That's, that's, works, that's my opinion. Like you, you, it works. You can go online. 
you can play with your friends in a league. Like, you can't take photos of it. Uh, I mean, that's not the point, though, right? The point is to play How games with How much better would it online. be with voice chat, though? That I, I agree with. I, yes. But the, the thing is, it's just missing a few features that in 2022, right, remember what year we're in, Nintendo should have. Like, why the, yeah, why no, the no, hell did we only just been- get Bluetooth audio? Yeah, they've always been behind the ball when it comes to online specifically. The thing is, now is the time to not be behind the behind the eight ball with online. Yeah, that's, no. that's yeah, that's fair enough. Build a the, robust this system. This will come up again near the end of the podcast, so make sure you yeah. stick around because there is a uh, a section where we'll be talking about Nintendo Online later on, and that will come up again. But for now, you can play as clubs with all your friends, not voice chatting and not recording videos of them, though. But I'm just happy to play at the club with my friends. At least it's something, I guess, yeah. Yeah. yeah they go, the, it's definitely going to be a multi online multiplayer style of game rather don't than get, a single wrong. It's a cool, kind of It's a cool thing, thing. and I'm excited yeah. to do that. It's just not cohesive enough that I would play more games online. Do you have an online membership, though? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> Nintendo doesn't give, doesn't give two stuffs. <laughs> you know, you've, you've got the membership. Two so. stuffs. Yeah, well, I was going to say other things, but I just thought we would. Good idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh. Who looks stupid now? Nintendo's like, haha, I've got your money. I don't care what you think. I'm still taking your money. I would pay more money, money. if they did it better. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. That's again, make sure you stick around. Let's move on from this. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Something different. Yeah, it's Mario Strikers. That's coming out in only a couple months, like four months. June 10th. June 10th. There you go, everyone. So it's, uh, it's definitely a big IP for. Nintendo, lots of people are extremely excited about that. Moving on, uh, Disney Pixar Racer is the next one I wanted to bring up. Another racer. I like racing games. We recently pre-ordered Gran Turismo. Uh, I love Mario Kart. Again, Dan, like this could be one that you would be able to play with your daughter. I know it's just more racing. I don't know how big she is on racing games, if she absolutely loves them. But, I mean, she could be like... I'm sure she could be Princess Jasmine. Like, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I'm I'm going to get it because she will enjoy it. Yeah. I'm over the racing stuff. Like, yep. how many no, different enough. racing games do they need to release that are exactly the same game, just with mm-hmm. different that's characters? Skin. We got Sonic, yep. we got Mario, and we got Disney. Then we got, what's the other one? Nickelodeon. Crash. 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 And Nickelodeon. Like, yeah, come on, uh, uh, Final Fantasy, yeah, Chocobo Racing, mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. So, cho- Chocobo Kart, basically, yeah, there's lots of kart, there's a Garfield Kart racer for God's sakes. Is there? I didn't yeah. even know about that yeah. one, yeah, yeah, there's a lot. Um, I look, I like them, I think, especially like Crash Team Racing, that does just enough to set itself apart. Hey, you have to like drive around an overworld and access tracks. That's far more single player orientated where you unlock tracks as you go. I think that's really cool. The thing that annoys me about this though, is that it's a free to play game. Mm. That just kind of. Yeah. So what are the microtransactions mm. going to be like? Are they just going to be aesthetic where you can buy different skins for your characters or are Disney they going to be involved. like. Yeah. Disney is involved. It's going to be stuffed. Yeah. Yeah. When I say I stuff, what it's, it's going to be stuffed like. with, with money, consumable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. It's more combat orientated. So maybe That's it's true. going to be like you can buy better weapons. If you don't spend the money on it, you just get a cart without a weapon. And then you can like buy guns and stuff to take other people out. And then, so in that sense, it could be pay to win. Yep. It's probably going to be pay to win. And, some sense. I think they're definitely going to lock a bunch of characters behind paywalls. That's for sure. Disney characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess. I, I guess we'll see. 
That's yeah. that's all. The only free games that I've played that aren't really pay to win are like Pokemon Go and Pokemon Quest. Yeah, I agree. And even Pokemon Quest, there's an argument that it's pay to win. A lot of people think that. Pokemon Quest? Wait, sorry. No, no. that's Pokemon Unite. Pokemon Unite. I specifically yeah. didn't put that one in there because that kind of is. But Pokemon Quest, yeah. is that's just time-based. Yeah. Yes. Those um, those things. And Pokemon Go. I've still spent money on Pokemon Go, but it's not really paid. Well, there's no not really winning in Pokemon Go. Yes, exactly. You're just playing against yourself, aren't mm. you, essentially? Yes. Yeah, now that's going to be interesting. I uh, I don't even know when that's coming out, but I mean, it looks fun. Again, I'm sure your daughter's going to like it. Dan, good one for the kids. Mm, Ten best racing games on the Switch. Video idea. <laughs> All kart races. <laughs> yeah. Is there any real question though? Like it's always. Anyways, anyways. Uh, moving on. We've got. Um... Sorry, say that again, Dan. I missed it. Bring Forza to the Nintendo. Come on. Oh, oh. Right. wouldn't that be cool? It wouldn't be able to handle it. Mm. You'd be able to see like three meters in front of you and Is then that. it would have to load in. Again, yeah. make sure you stick around till the end because I have some thoughts on that also. Uh, for now, sticking to the direct, we have uh, The Force Unleashed, Star Wars. Sorry, my note said SW and I couldn't think about what that stands for. <laughs> I was like, what's SW? You my bad. Know. I wrote the note. It's Star Wars. Um, I have no real thoughts of this. I never played the original. It's just a remake. Dan? I have thoughts. Yes. Take it away, I know. Dan. We weren't even going to bring this up and Dan's like, I have thoughts. <laughs> I knew he would have thoughts. When you went to get the book, I was like, so what do you think about Star Wars? Yeah, classic. Dan is a Star Wars nerd, if you didn't know. He likes yeah. them. I, look, I am a massive fan of Star Wars to the point where I 3D print myself a lightsaber and stuff like that. So, I, like, I'm really invested in Star Wars. I've, I've watched all the spin-offs of the blah, 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 whatever. Force Unleashed, mm-hmm. fantastic game. It is a very good game. Force Unleashed, yeah. better in terms of what you can do, but I like the story of the, the original. Yep. I am sick to death of games coming to the Switch just repeats. I mm-hmm. I cannot handle How old is the original? Oh, I don't know. Xbox 360. Okay. Okay. So, yep. Old. Like, even, so they brought, they recently brought out, well, not recently, it was probably a year ago now, but they brought out Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast, and Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. Both in their rights, fantastic games to play and available from iDigitalGames.com. But mm. they are both very, very good games. They were great on PC and they're, they're a lot of fun. Problem with these two games, which is going to be a problem with Unleashed, the controls are lacking. Dated? Lacking, as in they're just sometimes non-existent. Is that a port problem, or is that just a problem with the original games being? That's a port problem. Oh, okay, interesting. So they just, I wonder who's doing all the ports. I don't. I don't know. It's it's just no, like we've slapped it together. Here you go. You're a Star Wars fan, so you're just going to buy it. I, yeah. yeah, that's that is it, isn't it? Yeah, like I'm just over the Star Wars re-releases of of games to the to the Nintendo. What would be really cool is like they've done an awesome job with that Lego Star Wars game. Like that, the YouTube yeah. videos that I've been watching is absolutely awesome. Yeah. It looks Please awesome. do yeah, something that's like that, or yeah. even Fallen Order is a fantastic. Star Wars game, a recent Star Wars game, and we do know that Fallen Order 2 is is coming via okay. Respawn, the, the company that made the original, which is which is good. Connected to EA, but they they still made a good game. And, they had me a bit uh, worried there. Yeah, no, no, no. They still made a Fallen Order was really good. 
and it adds to the and as Laura was saying earlier, it's nice to have games that add to the lore, yeah. which is is really cool. And you know, with Disney owning everything now, uh, yeah, everything mm-hmm. Star Wars and all the IP, they do have the ability to expand on that lore like never before, and they're 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 doing it. They basically destroyed all the old stuff that was not canon they just called it mm-hmm. legends so it never really happened and now they're redoing their I, old stuff their own stuff I, and bringing some of those people into canon because through fans, the gap through the video games yeah because fans would write otherwise like yep. seriously and yeah there's a whole lot more star wars lore than i feel like i know about i oh. know that there's a shitload basically you got no idea mate. <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah it's, That's pretty much what I expected. It's uh, it's it's absolutely huge, like it, it, everything. But I, again, I like Force Unleashed. It was a good game. I'd just like something different, something new, something fresh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, fair literally sick and tired of the same games just being brought out. The, the Switch is a money maker, though, man. Like, there's over a hundred million people that own that, and it's a market that you might as well get into. You know, I like. I think that's totally fair from a business perspective. You've got oh, this from game. From a business perspective, not, it makes sense. Yeah, why not slap it on a new system with potentially again hundreds of millions of people? Like, there's you, you're going to sell a couple, you know, for <laughs> relatively little effort. So I, I totally get it. But, I, again, I know where you're coming from as well. Speaking of remakes and old games coming to the Switch, uh, the Ezio collection, the old uh, Assassin's Creed. I am excited for that. I wonder how it will run on the Switch. No, nah, not a fan, Dan. Oh, same point again, as before. Again, same thing as before. Yep. Look. I am a massive fan of Assassin's Creed and the whole thing. Like Black Flag as an example, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, for those that don't know, is by far the best Assassin's Creed game to ever be released. And there you go. definitely in my top five games of all time. Oh, there you Absolutely go. That is also that available. Yes, which is available on the Switch. And yes, I did buy it. Hmm. And it worked well. I was surprised. Good. I thought it was going to be a, a bit glitchy and, and all that sort of stuff. But I, I didn't have any issues playing that game. But again, no. I've played them all. Black Flag, I was happy to replay because I, I really enjoyed that game. And Rogue something or other, I can't remember what it's called. It was like yeah. the second release after Black Flag. And they released the Nintendo Switch version and it released Black Flag and Rogue, whatever it's called. Yes. On the yeah, yeah. Same cartridge. So mm-hmm. that game I was happy to play because I hadn't played it and it didn't really get that much hype when it was released. So okay. it was good to play. The, the Ezio trilogy, on the other hand, is uh, they are arguably the biggest of the Assassin's Creed games. Arguably. Mm. Assassin. <laughs> I mean, he is definitely the most beloved assassin. Mm. Yeah. Hence yeah. why that's three. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he's it. What are you doing? There's a fly around my face. Sorry. I think it's the only. He's the only assassin to have three games. Mm-hmm. Is okay. that correct? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think some some others have had two, but yeah, he's the only one to have three. He's de- yeah, he's, he's a beloved character. I think it's been long enough that. Like it's a it's fair enough, you know. They're doing a, a remaster of all three of them. I think they're adding enough stuff to make this worthwhile. So they're updating the visuals. Uh, the display has been optimized specifically for the Switch. Uh, there's going to be touch controls. Yeah, I wonder what the touch screen's going to be. Yeah, that's interesting. So I'm I'm excited to see what they've done with it. The worst part, in my opinion, is that. Dan, you mentioned before that there was two Assassin's Creed games on the one cartridge. 
That's actually wrong. There's only one Assassin's Creed game on that cartridge and you have to download the other yeah, one. That's, that's correct. Oh. Which, yes, which is what's happening here. If you buy the physical copy of the Ezio collection, the trilogy, and it's the same thing that's happened with the recent GTA trilogy as well, is that you get one game and then you still have to download the other two from the eShop for free, obviously, if you buy the cartridge, but you don't actually own all three of them physically. Well, the cartridges aren't just like infinite storage space and Assassin's Creed games are quite large. So yeah, that's it some- makes sense. It's definitely something that Nintendo needs to start. They, they need to look into that in the next generation of consoles. Well, that was part storage of the reason size. why they had to release Kingdom Hearts as cloud, wasn't it? Because of the store. One of the one of the many reasons was that because the cartridge was too small. Yep. So so they kept saying, I mean, yes, yeah. We, we we won't get into that, but there is some there are some very large games on Switch cartridges anyway. So mm. yeah, I guess yeah. yeah. That like look, it is what it is. That comes out in like two days. So again, too many games, not enough time to play them. I think. Yeah. So oh well. You know, it is what it is. Dan, I think you personally might be a bit more excited for this one than we are. Chrono Cross Remaster. I'm over it. No, <laughs> I'm just, I'm literally just. Fair trying. enough, yeah. See, I know so many people who were like, I love that. Like, that's what I want from the Nintendo Directs. Like, I want remasters of old games. And. A lot of people, yeah, have a lot of nostalgia yeah. and things for old games. So I think it's great, especially with something like the Chrono Cross remaster, because that's like stuck on the PS One. Exactly, yeah. Especially when it when the games come become like almost obsolete and yep. like games they release and they're a certain price, and then time goes on, and then they get cheaper, and then more time goes on, and then they get crazy expensive. Apparently, Chrono Cross is like five hundred dollars now. Yeah, if you're looking for a physical copy of that, so that's why I think it's great that um, they remaster some games that are really hard to get your hands on. Yeah, no. And whose PS One still works? Mine certainly doesn't. Ooh, uh, I got four that work. So, oh, lucky. <laughs> I uh, he's an adult. Like I, I like look. Remasters are not the problem. It's that. Mm. I feel like that's the bulk of what we're getting. Yeah. Oh, this direct was definitely very much that. Mm. And I just, I want, I've only got so much time to, to game that yeah. whatever I'm doing, I'd sort of like to be a new experience, unless it was a game that I really, really, really enjoyed Black Flag. I was happy to play again. Knights of the uh-huh. Old Republic 2, I'll play that again. I'll probably stuff it up, but I will play that again. I'm just, yeah. Yeah, I just thought you'd have, I mean, I was totally taking a wild shot in the dark there when I said you'd be more excited than us. I just thought you might have a little bit more nostalgia for Chrono Cross than we do. Uh, there's big talk of Chrono Trigger. Everyone wants uh, Chrono Trigger to come over or do a remaster. Well, they've brought the origin story. So my original thought was that maybe they're introducing people to this character to, you know, get people excited for a new game that could possibly be coming out. But mm-hmm. that's just my theory. Yes, I definitely agree with that. It's um, They're like warming you up for mm-hmm. it. They're like, you know, a it's like bit- an introduction. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a little bit off topic here, but um, the current understanding, I guess, in the video game world is that the Metroid Prime trilogy is set and ready to go to be released on the Nintendo Switch, but they are not... Set and ready to yep, go. Yeah, it's been ready for a long time, but the they are not going to release the trilogy until they have a definitive release date on number four because... They want to release the trilogy, get everyone hyped up for number four, and then, you know, six months, a year down the track, then release Metroid Prime 4. That seems like a good idea, actually, yes, doesn't it? Yes, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Again, it's just smart marketing, smart advertising. So, yeah, similar thing, I mm-hmm. think. You know, 
hopefully they're just warming people up for a new game in the Chrono series. Yep. Yeah, which is, yeah, I, I would be more than happy with that if that were to happen. All right, moving on. What do we have next? Ooh, okay. So, Dan, you're not a fan of remasters. How about remakes? <laughs> He's like, nah, okay. same thing. Okay, okay, wait, wait for it. What about remakes of games that never came to your country that have been stuck in Japan on the SNES since time immemorial? So essentially it's a new game. Yeah, I, I have mixed feelings about games that are only released in a certain country and because you can always get these games, right? Yes, that, that is possible, just in a different language. Yes. So, as an example, I think Dragon Ball Z uh, something, BU something, blah, 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 2, was only yeah. available on the Super Nintendo in Japan. Japan, there is a couple of DBZ games, yeah. Yeah, so I've played that, and that's a bloody good game. So, yeah. Is that an I RPG, do, though? Yeah, I, I do yeah. like that they are bringing the... Japanese or, you know, origin country games to other countries. But what are they changing? So, so we are all, we're, we're talking about uh, live alive at the moment or live a live or live alive, live a live or it's live alive. Is it's it? live alive. <laughs> <laughs> live live, live alive, live a live, live alive. Live a live. Who knows? Anyways. It's live a life. <laughs> it's live a life. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're, of course, talking about that. Um, they've rebuilt it in this uh, HD, 2D kind of art style, uh, which is what uh, Project Triangle Strategy is going to be in when that releases Very in March. cool art style. Yeah. And, you know, well, for one, they're changing the language so I can actually read and follow along with the story. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is, That's a new thing. This will be a – so I I had not heard of this game before. I know a lot of people hadn't because it is was a Japanese exclusive. Um, it's, it's an RPG among other things. So – there's lots of different eras that you're going to work your way through. And in some of these eras, you're going to be a ninja master. So it's going to be a fighting game, like a side-scrolling fighter. In other ones, it's going to be like a shooter. Uh, obviously, RPG mechanics, all of that type of stuff. So I, I'm, I'm really excited for that. Almost like you don't really know what you're going to get style gameplay. And I just love that HD 2D. It really reminds me of Octopath a lot yes. because it's in Octopath you didn't have different time frames necessarily, but you had story from the perspective of these yeah. different eight, characters, eight different eight characters. characters. Yeah. And now it's so that's kind of similar in that way. And of course the HD 2D is similar to Octopath. So and reminds- the fact it's Square Enix as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that Octopath is really what drove home this resurgence of HD, 2D mm-hmm. art styles. Well, that was like a really popular release. It's beautiful Especially as well. since it was like so, it was relatively early on yes. in the Switch. Yes, so was. people just went hundies for yep. it. When, of course, the Switch first released, there wasn't so many games. Mm-hmm. Now there's just like hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Octopath is an amazing game if anyone hasn't played that. Uh, again, sequel spiritual successor type thing in a triangle strategy coming soon. And yeah, now we have this, uh, there are of course, Square Enix is of course doing uh, the remake of Dragon Quest three in this art style as well. So yeah, I mean, Dan, when you say, what have they done? I mean, they've essentially just, they've, they've rebuilt the game. I mean, they have the ideas, obviously they know what's going to happen. They have the story and stuff, but it's, it's all different. Like it's, it's built in a different engine using a different art style on a game that wasn't in English. Uh, you could find fan translations, but they're patchy to say a good thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you can't really say much, many good things about a lot of those fan translations. Uh, and, and again, it's an RPG, so you really need to, to know what's going on. Uh, this was 
this is a highlight for me. I'm not going to lie. This is, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's honestly one of one of my favorite things about this direct. I am so excited for Live Alive. I didn't know I wanted it. I I need it. I need it. What I'm more, I guess, heard with with these directs is just you know these remakes or like this is slightly different obviously because it's not available everywhere but they shouldn't be a big talking point from nintendo they should just be see i think nintendo has got a lot of that nostalgia as well like so many people like when when the NES first came out, like it wasn't a video game console that you owned. It was like a Nintendo, you know, like you had a Nintendo. Nintendo, fun fact, Nintendo actually created the phrase video game console because they were worried that all of the video game consoles were going to be called Nintendos. They, they were worried people would get confused between their brand and just consoles in general, which is um, <laughs> it's pretty cool, isn't it? I like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they've got all that nostalgia, you know, and I don't they have that to play off, I think. I have I have no issue with them playing off nostalgia. What I do have an issue with is their again, this remake model uh, of the of the switch, which is which is realistically what it's turned into. And Oh, man. Nah, nah. I highly disagree with that statement. Highly. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, how many amazing games are Switch only? Metroid Dread, Luigi's Mansion, Octopath Traveler, like so many amazing, not just first party, but third party Switch exclusives. And if there's anything that the Switch is and does right, it's indies. Like it is very true. Oh, it's an absolute gun on the indies. It does have a lot of like revisions and remakes on it, but there's still heaps of like new games. Yeah. Like well, like Splatoon 3, Kirby, the ones that we're not talking about today because like we already knew and have like talked about them before. And like Legends Arceus, that's a huge game that just recently came out. Yeah, yeah. I think I think every console has its remakes. Again, because they're just they're just easy to to make money on. I don't, I don't like I said. I don't have a problem with the remakes, but all I feel we're getting lately from Nintendo is remakes. You, I feel like you're just looking like you've got a little bit of tunnel vision here. You know, like there's 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 definitely a lot more. Again, Kirby, Triangle Strategy, Splatoon Three. Yeah, I want to see some. Uh, there's going to be a couple like others that we haven't brought up yet, which we will get to. Mario Strikers, you know, like that. There's there's a lot. Yeah, there's a couple. Hmm. Yeah, there's- Arceus, like how many weeks was that? Like three weeks ago? Maybe it was like a month ago. Yeah, two weeks. Two, two weeks. weeks. Two and a bit. Two weeks. Two and a bit weeks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Two weeks. Time flies, doesn't it? Huh. <laughs> I thought it was like longer than that for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. And and that, that is a game that I am bored with. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. That's because you've still got... a new game though. Yes. No, yeah, yeah absolutely. And yeah. I and I think I think Arceus was was something that they did well, but what came before that? Pokemon Sword and Shield. No. Yeah, last year for the Switch, and I feel like for a lot of consoles over the last two years. Every like so many games have been held up, yes, and that, delayed. That is for sure. Yep, definitely. But I feel like I do feel like this year is going to be great for Nintendo Switch releases, and I think they're finally oh, getting out maybe, of like maybe, the COVID maybe month, you know yeah this maybe it'll the, get on track. Yeah. I'm just saying for me, games wise that I play on the Nintendo Switch, I don't feel as confident as I did a couple of years ago. When it when it first released, I, I, there were games that were absolute staples of the Nintendo. You know, Breath of the Wild as an example mm-hmm. that you would that is a must have that you would own. Splatoon three for me, I have no interest in. Kirby, I've got no interest in. 
And a lot so of these the are just others, preferences, though. Like, that? this is just personal preferences, though. Like, yeah, yeah, Splatoon yeah. No, is no, no, no. Don't, don't get me wrong. Nintendo's I'm, top IPs. I'm, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure they're, they're good games that people will enjoy. I'm just saying, for me, the remake's the only thing that I would currently play on the Nintendo. The other ones, the remakes are the only ones that you're interested in. Yes. I'm, I'm not articulating myself gotcha. uh, very well yeah. at the moment. But uh, no, that, that's fair. I just yeah, think it's fair. a little unfair to say that it's a remake machine because that's your personal preference with it. I mean, like you've turned it into that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to like, I'm like, I'm not angry at it. Like, that's. <laughs> Feel like you're angry I'm not right. trying to create tension or anything. This is just an interesting talking point. That's a, I feel like keeps these podcasts more interesting when we disagree. Uh, if we all agreed, it would just be boring, wouldn't it? Mm. Um, yeah, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, there is so so many games coming out this year for Nintendo. It is. It. it I'm going to say it. I'm going to call it now. It is the best year for the Nintendo Switch since it was released. Even better than the release year. It's, better than the release yeah. year. If if we get what they've promised us, it will be easily the best year of Switch. It's quite reminiscent of the first year of Switch, isn't it? Because like the games that were released in that first year, we are seeing um, sequels of like Breath of the Wilds. Yeah. Um, um, Splatoon. Fire Emblem Warriors. Yeah, Fire Emblem. Uh, there's another big one that we will talk about near the end of this discussion as well. It's quite reminiscent of the my first year. Is I'm just bored with my Switch now. Mm. Dude, there is so much to play. Like, so much. So many games. Too many games. I'm Try Shin Megami like, Tensei 5. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm now bored with it. like one of the best games I've ever played, and it's so I'm, underrated, I'm, and more I'm people just, need to play. I'm just now bored with it. That's the problem. I, I have. Fair enough. Go? It's I, I, it's good. I'm at the point with the Nintendo Switch where, yeah, I'm bored. See, so are you bored with Switch or are you bored with Nintendo's IPs? Because a that's a, a little bit of B. Because like a, a little bit of both. Like you, you, a console is is good and all, but what's a console without games? You know, like it's not like a PC does a lot more than just games, you know. So that's that's a lot without without them. But if PlayStation didn't have your, you know, your Uncharted, your Ratchet and Clanks, your, you know, your Spider-Man, your Ghost of Tsushima, if Xbox didn't have uh, Psychonauts, Forza, Halo, then we we wouldn't care. And it's the same with Nintendo. If they didn't have Mario or Zelda or Shin Megami Tensei, or Kirby, or whatever whatever they've got, then people wouldn't care either. So it's just, it, it literally just comes down to what games do you want to play? You yeah, know? I'm just, uh, if it is indies, go the Switch. I, I just want them to do a little bit better. That's my... Uh, the, for me, the Nintendo Switch was a console that was a must-have before, and the longer I have it, the less I care whether or not it's charged. Mm, there you even, yes. Even Arceus has gotten to the point, so that kind of game's two weeks old, and um, it was fun at the beginning. It was fun in the middle. Now I just feel it's a grind. Are you trying to complete the Pokedex? Not even. Oh, well, sort of. Just trying to get all yeah. the Have Pokemon. Have you finished the story yet? Yeah, you finished it in like two days. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Freaking insane. Yeah, so I've never enjoyed the grind of completing the Pokedex in a, in a Pokemon game. I've actually never completed a Pokedex in the Pokemon game because it's just not really my thing. That's all. It's nope. the additional nope. okay. stuff on top of that, though. Mm. That's the and and what I feel could be done better. Like to get a particular Pokemon, you need to find. I'm I'm going to try and 
People who have played the game are going to know what I'm talking about. For those that haven't yet played it, I'm trying to make sure there are no spoilers. But you need to find, I think it's 20 of something in each different section, right, of this semi-open world game. Barely semi-open world. Now, the problem with finding these things is the game renders so shit Right, and this is something that you brought up previously. That now, I'm at this point in the game, is so big that it is causing me to get pissed off with the game because you need to see this little glowy thing. Oh, Sometimes mm -hmm. it's rendering in. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other yeah, times, yeah. I've literally flown past it, or run past it, or even walked past it. And then there's a couple of times where I've stopped and gone, hold on, what did I see out of the corner of my eye? I turn, yep. wait, and then it renders in. That's bullshit. Yep. So there is yeah, a... that kind of sucks. For those of you that are a bit confused, as I was, uh, there is a game-long side quest where you have to find a bunch of wisps, um, like will-o'-the-wisps, little fires, and that is what Dan is talking about. Try searching for them at night. I find that they appear better at night. They, uh, they do, I, but again, the problem is it's it's not even the fact that they're not appearing. They're, they're just not there sometimes. They're just not there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There no, are I, I actually had one a, in particular, right? I'm getting yeah. a bit fired up about this because it, it pissed me off the other day. I literally <laughs> went around and around to try and find this last wisp, and then oh, I was nice. standing oh. in the location... Mm. And I, I literally just stood there and went, bloody hell, I don't know where this thing is. This is getting mm -hmm. ridiculous. And then it loaded in. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. that does sound quite annoying. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not like you've just got to find 20. You've got to find mm. like, like 100 and 100. And, yeah. <laughs> Dan is a grumpy old man today, <laughs> friends. The problem doesn't was like I was playing. Back, doesn't like Pokemon. It was the only thing I could play with back. my back being bad. So I was just, I was just already in like an extremely bad mood because my back was killing yeah. me and I yeah. couldn't do anything else. And I'm sitting there looking for these damn stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> So that's just my disappointment with Nintendo at the moment. I feel like they didn't have these problems with Sword and Shield, mm -hmm. as an example, and I'm worried we're going to see that more and more with these games. Like I said, remakes, at the moment, the remakes are the only thing that I'm excited by, I guess, other than Strikers and, and a couple of other things. But the Star Wars remakes, as an example, they did a shit job of that. Yeah, so, yeah, I can't. Really speak for those because I I'd never even bothered. Yeah, no, look, they just look. They I love those games, but they just did a bad job of. of yeah, that's not controls. Nintendo though. That's like Disney and wh whichever studio is no, no, no. making. Everything these on Nintendo games. is an extension of Nintendo. Saying that Nintendo is not the problem is a problem, as far as I'm concerned. They have they have the obligation to the people that purchase their console and invest in their ecosystem to do a better job. I understand where you're coming from. It's like when you're managing a restaurant and one of the younger people that you're managing does something wrong, it's your responsibility. Yeah, but they didn't make the game. I get that they have a responsibility to, to make sure it's good. Mm. And it's, that's exactly what, that's just what he's it, saying. Pull it from the store if it's not. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I get it, I guess. It's just, it's just a little bit of quality control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's understandable. I see where you're coming from, yeah, for sure. That's that's my that's where my biggest gripe is at the moment. Remakes, that's why I'm I'm not very excited about Star Wars Unleashed. I would purchase it if I was sure that the controls were gonna work. But they couldn't even get Pokemon Arceus right. Like that game so is now rendering that... so poorly for me, which before, if you remember when we originally started talking about this and I was a fair bit of the way further than you guys. Yeah, you didn't I have as much of a problem with that as we did. Yeah, I, didn't, yeah, I wasn't having any problem. problem 
Now, yeah. but you've noticed it now. Yeah. Now it's just yeah, such. It a, is a big problem. The thing is, if they can't get that right, what are they getting right with, so, with games that aren't theirs? The the issue that we're having with the Switch now is that it is so underpowered uh, <laughs> that some of these first party. And I know, like, okay, let, Pokemon's pretty much a first party title. So some of these yeah, first party much. games are struggling. Are uh, the first and most obvious example of that is Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity. Like that thing drops a lot of frames. Mm, it really does. Yeah. It's a great game, but it has it definitely yeah. has some pretty intense issues. Yeah. That when it first released, everyone was like, like the OLED hadn't been announced yet, had it? No. I'm pretty sure everybody was still holding out for the fact that, oh, it performs really poorly, but, you know, they're probably going to make a Switch 2 soon because yeah. they've been running with the same model for five years. Yeah. And then they released the, o- the OLED and it didn't address any of those issues no. whatsoever. No. This it's is, just, so yeah. it still just runs so, oh, crap on. house. Did I just hear the Switch you say is- they, made a, they made a remake of the Switch console? Huh? Wait, well, they... There was rumors that they were going to remake the Switch console and remake like an OLED, a Switch 2. Was yeah, a, Switch that was going to be more powerful. <laughs> Again, a pathetic attempt. Yeah, it didn't it company. wasn't it, it wasn't a Switch 2. The rumors they, were just wrong. It was, you know, but, you can never believe everything that you hear on the street and there's a perfect right. example. There was never a Switch 2 coming. People were just holding out that hope and kind of using it as an excuse to be like, oh, you know, Hyrule Warriors runs crap, but it's okay. They're probably going to fix that later on. It's and because that's it, what they not. did with the 3DS. Yeah. Hyrule Warriors released on the 3DS. It was average to say the least. And then they released their 3DS XL i2 plus, whatever it was. And um, yeah, that, and it addressed a lot of those issues and it, and it runs really well. Uh, that was the thinking. But yeah. Didn't happen. Yeah. The, the, the system is underpowered and it is becoming more and more obvious mm-hmm. as we come along in this generation. This that is, is the issue. When yeah. it's something like Sword and Shield, which is like, it's shitter. Let's be honest. It is a shitter game in both like visuals, just everything really. Like it's just not, it's just not as good. So I feel like that's a little bit of an, unfair comparison uh if you compare it to something like breath of the wilds i feel like that's a more fair comparison uh because breath of the wilds runs fantastically and it always and has. it's better it's yes. like better in every yeah. like in pow- power wise yeah it's better but arceus still struggles so much so yeah why is that i do understand that frustration for sure i I think it's got a lot to do with pokemon because shin megami tensai 5 is a similar style of game where there is all these monsters running around in the overworld and it has quite a few of the same issues where a lot of these monsters are demons they're called in the shin megami series they just run at piss all frames per second that's like a joke sometimes. Yeah, but this, uh, is, they're running like to get. this is my concern. Like if you have Dying Light 2 just came out, right? And now yep. obviously not on the Nintendo. But Dying Light 2 on the yeah, PS5. It's on, it's on the cloud for people that are uh, not living in Australia. Hmm. It is available on the cloud on Nintendo. I'm pretty certain. So Dying Light 2 is still having massive frame rate drops. On the bloody PlayStation 5. No shit. There you go. So. That's insane. Yeah. What, what is going on with the industry at the moment? This is, this is where. So for me, it's not just Nintendo's made a couple of remakes, blah, blah, blah. blah who cares? For me, I'm, I'm just piecing together. Now, again, maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist and wearing a tinfoil hat. I don't know. I am just piecing together what the industry has done since COVID. Yep. Right? If you think about it, well, really, cyberpunk. Cyberpunk started it all. Uh, what the hell is going on? Cyberpunk, still, Roland, isn't there. What, like, what the hell? 
Do you think that games are progressing faster than the consoles are progressing? They're yeah, that's what it. I got out of that. They're, they're just like Dying Light 2 was meant to be absolutely epic and it's got like frame rate drops on a PlayStation 5. Seriously. Mm. Does that mean that the game's too good? Or does I think that the, mean games, that the game's too bad? The games require too much power than the consoles can offer them. The, the, so as an example, on a PC, and this is this is the thing. So people talk about PC Master Race and blah, 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 you know, all, all that stuff. Realistically, on a on a PC, Cyberpunk wasn't an issue. Dying Light 2, as far as I have heard reports, is not an issue. How many, and there's, there's plenty of others. Where, where is this going to stop or level out? Is is my big concern. And I think Nintendo is going to fall into a trap of doing half-assed remakes. And again, it's because both of these Star Wars games, like yes, they are older games, no shit, they're not going to run fantastic, but they are older games that could literally run on a bloody HTC Desire, which was one of the first Android phones that ever was ever brought out. They can run on bugger all processing power and i think that's why nintendo brings out a lot of these other games but they still didn't do that right now again your point was it's not nintendo's fault and no they didn't make it but they allowed it to be released yeah are these re-releases on other consoles and stuff as well i just think if you if Nintendo starts saying you're not allowed to put your game on our system, then that opens up a whole nother can of worms of them basically just having way too much swing and like like it they become like a nanny state. Do you know what I mean? Like they well, introduce. What's, what's wrong with that if the game doesn't work? I just think that it's. I think there's a, a few problems that will arise if something like that happens where like people are like, no, I like that game. I want it and then can't get it. If, if a game is released, it should work. Yeah, yes, I agree. When you yes, spend there money be, on... There's going to be things that they find out later. Don't get me wrong. There is always going to be patches or updates or blah, blah, blah. And I'm I'm fine I'm fine with that right because that's that's where we are now. TVs get updates, bloody fridges get software updates. Okay, so every everything gets a software update. My my problem is is releasing the games before they're ready, or knowing that they're like that, and just going, hey, we want your money anyway. This is this is yeah. my point. So I think I, I have, every Console is guilty of that for yes, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not just Nintendo. Don't get me wrong. That's what I'm saying. It is, no. is there is an industry problem mm-hmm. at the moment, and if they can't get the remakes right, how are we going to get the new games right? Arceus has just mm-hmm. really pissed me off. That's where, yeah, I can tell. Where this it's the last straw on yeah. <laughs> on their yeah. back because it's already carrying Roland. Yeah, yeah, Arceus yeah. was just the last straw that was dropped on. Your Roland load. Then I just, I'm, See, I'm just sick of games I think not working. The game can still be fun and good, and we made this point in our Pokemon review on our YouTube channel. It's had overwhelmingly positive reviews, Legends Arceus, and it is undeniably fun. Despite let's let's forget about your like issues with this one side quest. But can like, you though? The whole game. Let's just for a second. Let's just for a second. Let's not, you know, let's yeah, look. No, it's, it's fun. It's got a great gameplay loop. That the, the series has been taken somewhere else. Uh you know, it's got more story, blah 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 blah. It's what you know it's what everyone wanted from a Pokemon game. Like it is universally mm-hmm. loved. Mm-hmm. And for them to be able to do that despite all these problems, mm-hmm. I think says a lot and that is a good thing and it's just a very big juxtaposition to something like 
Roland and his game, which I don't actually like mentioning. Cyberpunk, it's cyberpunk. Uh, it's that was Voldemort of games. That was you, isn't it? That they are game that shall not be named. That was what? universally hated. Not. It wasn't universally hated because some people were able to finish the game. Some it people really loved that loved, game. Yeah. So that I, so it was the yeah, majority. Sorry, you go on. I think where do you draw the line? I draw the line at the game being playable and an enjoyable experience because even though you might have some things that suffer like frame rates, et cetera, as long as the game and the quests are completable, then I think that it is possible to look past all these things. But Dan's issue is that he had a quest that was barely completable mm. and that kind of really like tiptoes along the line, doesn't it? The because he, of- he was almost not able to complete that quest because of the limitations of the game. Yes. So, yeah, my, my issue, like Arceus, fantastic game. Okay, let's let's remove the rendering and the other and the other issues that the game has. It is a fantastic game. I guarantee, yep. right? I I would put money on this. In three to four weeks, maybe longer, we're going to start seeing the bad reviews filter through. Because again, that all they did was they went in a different direction with Pokemon, and they did it well. I ha- I've it's easier to catch Pokemon now. You can just throw a Pokeball at them and run away. Awesome, right? That's that's fantastic. I mean, the fact that you only got 31 pastures, that's a that's an issue considering how many Pokemon they want you to catch and do, and blah, 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 blah. And then you can't multi-select. You can only multi-release. That's just stupid. But anyway, let's forget those small insig- – that's small and insignificant, Okay. So the fact that you can't multi-select a move like you want, you can only multi-release, okay? Small issue, insignificant, doesn't really affect the gameplay. It just means you press another couple of buttons, right? Whatever. The fact that you have to do a side quest where there's a how many? A hundred and what? 107, I think. 107 little bloody floaty things in the middle of nowhere that aren't rendering in properly. And if you do not get all of them, you cannot finish your Pokedex. Yes, yes. You can't, yes, do the, the end game so, quest, I guess, mm, the, the game long target. So I'm just getting irritated with half assed games. Because it started affecting the actual ability that you have to play the game and finish the game. I gave you a puzzle and, and took out 10 pieces and said, don't worry, I'll mm. give them to you in a couple of years. You get pissed off. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, un- I understand you being upset about it. Absolutely. Like that's that's. I'm not trying to take away from you being upset at all. And I agree with you. I think it's a bit crap, especially coming from Game Freak and the Pokemon Company. You know, literally the biggest franchise of anything in the whole world. Uh, they, 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 they could. Do, that's how it should be seen. They, they, could, they could do better. Yes, for sure. Uh, Again, I'm not a game developer, so I can't. I can't. Maybe they couldn't do better. I'm not. I'm not really sure. But the game is fun, and I think that is what ultimately counts. And again, Shin Megami Tensei has some similar issues. It's nowhere near as bad. Uh, it's not like that where assets just aren't there and load eventually. It's just that some of the monsters run at very low frames. But that game is. It, like it's easily my game of the year for last year. It is a phenomenally good game. It's actually quite similar to Pokemon. If anyone is uh, a Pokemon fan, I highly recommend you checking out Shin Megami Tensei Five. It is amazing, uh, but it's it's fun, you know. Like those frame rate drops, okay, they're annoying. But ultimately, when I catch this demon and I get this badass werewolf looking guy from France, like. That's cool. Like, I like him. I'm, I still want him, despite him running at, you know, five frames a second or whatever he might be in the overworld. So, Nintendo make fun games is what I'm trying to say. You know, they make fun games and that is their ultimate seller. I just yeah, think game they make fun <laughs> games. But I just feel like it would be better if, if the games... 
Yeah, because like Shin Megami is an entirely different beast because you don't have trouble actually doing things in it. No. No, no. That's that is the that's the difference for me. Yeah. Not that I'm and I'm not saying Arceus is a bad game either. I think it's a really great game. I just think that that it is a big issue when you're not able to do things in the game. Yes. That, that's no, that's I, my big issue with all of these remakes and remasters and even brand new games, which to me is ludicrous. Like re- remasters and remakes are going to be hard because you're porting them to a completely different system where it wasn't originally intended for. Mm-hmm. That's harder. Okay. But you need to get it right. Yes. That's that's yeah, my I, big issue with what Nintendo and what Xbox and what Sony and blah, blah, blah are all doing is none of it feels right. So you've obviously been playing a lot of these Star Wars games, which, I mean, I think don't think anybody who's listening to this is ever going to play because... <laughs> Well, I mean, they haven't got a very good rapport, a, have they? Well, it I guess sounds after, bloody terrible. I'm never going to ever <laughs> even think about picking one up. <laughs> uh, but there is quite a few that run will, really well. Uh, for example, the uh, Crash Bandicoot trilogy uh, and the Spyro trilogy, both, mm. both uh, Activision titles. They play beautifully on on all the consoles, and I think that's. That should be the standard. Yeah. But I just don't think it's fair to niche all of those into they're all crap, they're all shit, they all don't run well. Because some of them do. And some of them, like those those trilogies especially, they did a damn good job at yeah. remaking those. So there is definitely exceptions. There is points on both sides. I don't think... I like Laura being the voice of reason here. Can you imagine if this podcast was just me and you, Dan? It would just be like. You would have given him a death oh, threat. Oh. You would have threatened him with death again. Yeah, exactly. I would have yeah. had to beep it out so, and put an apology in again. Yes. Uh, yes. I, thank you, Laura, for being the voice of reason here. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't think either of us are right, but I don't think either of us are wrong. Mm. Is that fair? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, oh, I just right. I want to enjoy what I'm playing. Yes. That's, so that's, and I really enjoyed Arcus. And I'm not, I really I'm not enjoyed that's what that's what has irritated me so much though. It's the fact that I did really enjoy it. Like mm. Diamond and it's Pearl. It's let down at the end. Yeah. You're yeah, having a just, great don't, relationship don't, and you just found out she's been cheating on you for two it's years. It's a better disappointment. Yeah. It's oh, just okay. like Really? So you ruined it. Yeah. It was so good. And now it's, yep. Right so at got, the end. Right when annoyed. you're about to close. Yeah. I got, I got annoyed originally because I didn't realise that you only had to get to research level 10 in the Pokedex, right? Because I don't, they talk too much in Arceus. Like, shut up. So I didn't, yeah. didn't realise you only had to get to number 10 to, to finish the Pokedex. And then I was watching... Uh, one of the uh, a streamer that we've had on the show, yeah, the show we're fancy as shit. Oh, uh, all right, wow. the show. Lemon. I was watching one of her uh, streams, and she mentioned something about it, and I said, "Hold on, what do you mean?" Because because <laughs> I don't not, read the words. No, I don't. Because for me, I, I just want to get through. I want to play the story. I aspect. actually have heard that before. Yeah, really? I'll, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, Somebody... I'll listen to the story yeah. and I and the, the core story and the cutscenes and blah blah blah. Like that's I enjoy that, especially Halo Infinite as an example. I sat there and watched every th- single cutscene and and recorded some of them because I enjoyed them. But the aimless talking that they could have gotten done in one sentence, it's it's just like seriously, come on. So I think. What they didn't do fantastic was the explanation afterwards. It was like, the, like when I came onto your stream and you were trying to work out how to find your journal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I couldn't even figure out where the side quests were. Yeah. That, that's, I just, you know, there were a couple of aspects. And again, those aspects aren't game killers. 
The game no, no, is no, the no. fact that you can't do something. But yes. so I looked at, I Drop saw Lemon saying, and she said, yeah. you've only got to get to research level 10. Because there's a point in the game that you get to where you've got to catch three particular Pokemon and complete their decks. When I looked at yep. the decks, I saw do 25 of this move, 25 of that move, 25 of that move. Okay, I stopped playing. Yeah. You have to see them use it 25 times, do you? Not actually. You've just got yes. to hit those research levels. Yeah, at so least can, once. So you don't, yeah, you basically you might do the X move twice and, mm -hmm. you know, yes, it still says that there's 25 options, but that doesn't mean you've got to do it 25 times. It means you can then do, move on to strong move twice and then agility twice and then evolve yep. the thing and then you've completed that aspect. But I don't feel like that's clear enough in the decks. When you look at the decks, it's just like 25, 25, 25. Again. Yeah, I mean, I problem. figured that out early on, but I also couldn't figure out how to get into my quests. So yeah. so that's that's <laughs> my problem, right? That is 100% yeah. user, user stupidity, right? 100%. Yeah. So that. That sort of thing. I mean, they could have made it clearer. There's easy ways to just add in a couple of words, but whatever. Again, yeah, definitely. not a game breaker. And learning that afterwards from watching somebody on stream, again, Lemon Cults, check her out. She's really good. Very enjoyable yeah, to watch. Right I think, you know, okay, cool. Saw that. Easy. Jumped back in and started playing again. Okay, again, user error or user stupidity, whatever you want to call it. But then getting to this particular task and not being able to complete it easy, like why have I got a bird if I can't bloody see shit? Yeah, we don't have the bird yet. Yeah, well, it's just a pain in the ass if you're looking for things. They don't render yeah. it until you passed it. It's like you're a bloody jet plane. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic yeah, no, that, that adds to the experience, Dan. You can't expect to see everything out the window of an aeroplane. So I always look for whales they're, they're and just, I've never seen one. See? See, maybe the whales just pop up after you've gone over them. It's just all part <laughs> making just, it realistic. They don't want you to see everything. Just like the mountain. It's not how real life works. <laughs> I see a mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Just... just uh, just that a little bit of that sort of stuff. The longest is tangent we have ever been on on this podcast. Yeah. That was meant to be a whole topic that was going to be discussed after we talked about the direct. That's right. We did it in the middle. But we've done it classic, in the middle. Some low-grade gamer style. I was, I was going to say classic Dan style, yeah, but classic, yeah. well, I helped that Yeah, tangent. you certainly <laughs> got on your own train yeah, and choo-chooed yourself along. We so. did pick a choo-choo all <laughs> along, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are going to go back to the direct, I think, yes. because there is quite a few things we have yet to discuss on that. So we realised after a while that the train went off course for a couple of miles and now it's been hours. So we thought maybe we would make this a two-parter. This has been part one, the argument. Mm. Tune in tomorrow for part two, the makeup. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely uh the the boy the boys get heated occasionally. <laughs> and uh that's why Laura's here, because uh she's better than us. Mm. Oh, I don't know if I'd say was, that. There was no uh, death look, threats this time. On. So that, that's a plus. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, nobody got threatened no with murder. Threats. So it's, it's very on brand to go off track anyway. So uh, you could say that. Now you've just got a little nugget to look forward to tomorrow. Mm, little nuggy, a little bit of extra content this week. Exactly. Make up for the lack of episode last week. Mm. Oh my god! Yeah, true. Uh, this was all planned <laughs> yeah. to make up for our disappearance last week. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye. Love you, bye.